Hi everyone, hope you all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. This will be the sixth video of the entire series that I'm going to create for Seam Solution. And in this video, I'm going to brief you all about how data normalization works and what is the purpose of data indexing in a Seam Solution. Now, if you're watching the series from the beginning, I hope you have a fair understanding of all these different line items that are mentioned over here. However, let's take a close look in terms of how data normalization and indexing works. Now, before I go ahead and show you the purpose of data normalization, I want you all to read a simple definition on Wikipedia itself, and that is database normalization is the process of structuring a relational database in accordance with a series of so-called normal forms in order to reduce data redundancy and improve data integrity. Now, from a seam solution perspective, this is where you will be paying a lot of focus. And let me explain you this with an example. So imagine there are two different tables and you want to join them. Okay. So a very naive kind of joining process can be this, which is listing down all the columns in the typical order. Okay. Because it's the very easiest form of first notion of data that we see over here so this is my table number one and this is my table number two and i have just combined these two tables now what we see over here that there is data redundancy which means what technically ownership and user principal name is having same data now the purpose of joining this data is to understand which device belongs to which user However, the effective method of data normalization or data joining process can be in table number two, I'll rename the column to user principal name. And then I will say table number one has to be joined with table number two on the column name, which is user principal name. Now, what you see over here is a kind of improved version of the data that we have seen in our last deck in fact data redundancy is also in, uh, reduced i mean there is no redundancy of data for now now let me show you this with an example directly on sentinel console and then things will make a lot more sense now imagine a scenario where you want to know that how many events occurred on a specific device when PowerShell was used and some connectivity or some network activity is happening. This is a use case. So if I'm telling you something right now, which is more over related to tables and queries and everything, don't pay attention to that. Just understand what normalization means in seam world. As of now, you don't need to know what is KQL, how I am writing these queries, what combination I'm using, how I'm combining tables. Just leave that aspect for now. As of now, just understand and visualize what will happen in this particular section, which is for results. So just for your information right now, I am inside a particular workspace and I'm going to write some queries to get some data from different tables. Now, I'm doing this because Sentinel uses dedicated schema architecture. This is something which I have already covered in my last video. Now, let's say the very first thing. I want to know device network event where the initiating process file name contains, let's say, PowerShell. Okay. Let's see this result first, whether we are getting any result. So this basically means that all of machines that I have here or which are getting listed over here, they have used PowerShell to perform some network activity. You can see it here. Okay. Now I don't need all this data for now. So now I'm just going to summarize the count for a specific device altogether. So I'm saying summarize the count by device ID and show me the device name and also show me the initiating process file name okay so now you can see i know that these are the devices which have used powershell to perform some network activity and this is the count the number of time a particular event has happened now i want to know typical device events okay 
where again let's say my action type is powershell and let's say powershell command okay now this basically means show me the results where powershell commands were used and again summarize the count let's say by device id and device name or device name or device id okay and also list the action type now i'm going to click on run so this result that i'm getting is coming from second command and this result that i'm getting is coming from this one now i have to join this data that we are getting with the data that i'm getting with this one now if you remember the normalization part that i was referring to these are two different tables and i'm just going to combine them and i want to reach a stage where i don't see any redundant data okay so i'll say table number one is this and this is where my query is ending and this is my second table which is device event however join device event with table number one on device id okay now let's click on run okay so we are getting results but then this result is not effective even though both the tables are combined but it's not effective for us because we are seeing a lot of redundant data as well as this count that we are getting is kind of not relatable i mean i don't know which what is the meaning of this count underscore one so here what i will say let's say device network event count the output that is coming from my first table should have this column name and here the count that is coming from my second table should have device event count as a column name so now you can see this will make slightly more sense i am getting device event count that means this is the count that is coming from device event table and similarly this is something which is coming from my first table however still there is a lot of redundant information which means practically i don't need this device id one because it will be same as compared to device id here and device name is also same so here the last step i can do is project away device name one comma device name comma device id one sorry okay and i'll click on run so now what you see is much more uh, i mean more efficient data to be very precise without any redundant information so this is my machine which has used powershell command these many times and this was the any this was uh, the actual file which was initiated and however these many network events were there okay now assume you are writing this query to perform some alert and you want to know that alert me if the count is beyond 50 okay so now what i can just say that i can just choose any of these and i can say show me the result where device network count is let's say greater than or equal to let's say 50 okay and let's see what happens i'm getting these results okay sorry device event count is something that i have added now i can change it to device network event as well and i can say run and now i'm only getting these two events if i'll reverse this then i'll get the remaining data so this is how practically speaking all the queries are written by using the right set of data so this is how data normalization works in a seam solution where you will combine data from multiple sources and you'll make sure the redundant information is removed so that you can write effective queries now let's talk about data indexing the purpose of data indexing is very simple that your sim solution should give you the required result as soon as possible that means data indexing capability from a sim solution perspective is basically a capability of indexing the data 
and it is actually defined that how quickly you can search a large chunk of data altogether. Now, data indexing is also something which is dependent on storage. Now, I'm not talking about uniform schema and a dedicated schema. That's how data is stored. But then there is a storage type as well. Now, generally speaking, in the common industry language, it is termed as hot storage and cold storage. Okay. Now, hot storage is basically the storage where data is available in real time and you will perform all the analytical operation. So everything that I was showing you here is something where the data exists in hot storage. This result that I'm getting right now is not archived. Whereas when it comes to cold storage, this is something which is related to archival data where the data has to be restored first and then you can perform all the analytical operations. So data indexing to summarize is something which is specifically related to security information management because if you have a SIM solution which is taking more time to give you the data, to give you the output, then for sure the SIM part, SIM part of SIM solution is not effective. Okay. Now, as I've said before that data indexing process will be different for both the data storage methods. It can be uniform schema and dedicated schema. And I can say this and I can prove this that data indexing process is much better in the solution which offer dedicated schema. So while you are evaluating multiple solutions, make sure that you keep this in mind that when you are writing queries, how quickly you are getting the outcome. Okay. So this was all about knowing how data indexing and normalization works in a same solution. Next, we'll talk about what is the purpose of data correlation in a SIM solution. So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.